Septuagint, Genesis 1, 1 through 3. En arche epoyesen hatha as tonu ranon kaiten gain. He de ge en a oratas kai akata skeo astas kai skatas ep ano tes abusu kai pneumatha u epiferata epano tu hudatas kai epen hatha as geneteto fos kai agenata fos. Genesis 1 verses 1 through 3 begins with this prepositional phrase en arche. Arche is feminine, singular, and dative, and the noun arche means a beginning. The preposition en only takes the dative. In the beginning, apoyesen, it begins with the verb. Apoyesen is the third singular, aorist, of the verb poieo. Poieo is an epsilon contract verb, and here we have the aorist. Notice the augment here, the epsilon and the stem of the third principal part. In the beginning, God created. Ha thaos apoyeson, he made. And the verb has two objects. Ton uranon kai tein gain. The first is masculine, singular accusative, the heaven. And the second tein gain is feminine, singular, and accusative. So by this expression, the heaven and the earth is meant the entire universe. It is a synecdoche the figure of speech in which a part stands for the whole. The verse then goes on with he de ge and the earth, which begins with the second element of this couplet, tain gain, and the earth, ein aoratos. Ein is the third singular, imperfect, indicative of the existential verb emi, which is typically designated emi sum to distinguish it from the form of Amy, which means to go. So this one is being used here uh, in an existential or perhaps a copulative sense. And the earth was aoratos kai a kata skeo astos. Both of these adjectives have an alpha privative in front of them. Aoratos means without division or without separation. Formless is a common English translation. And a kataskewastos, without preparation, uh, or empty, is another way this is translated, formless and void. So, gay, the subject, he gay, and the predicates aoratos and a kataskewastos. Now, one might ask, if the noun gay is feminine, why does it have what look like masculine endings? Why do these adjectives have what look like masculine endings? Well, they are not masculine, they are feminine. But it's very common for compound adjectives, which these are. They're compounded with these alpha privatives. Compound adjectives are adjectives of two endings. We have one set that covers both masculine and feminine, and another set which covers neuter. So these are feminine, but they have an omicron declension ending. And skatos, darkness. And here we have to supply a verb. Darkness was upon, or was over, epano tes abusu, over the abyss. This word epano is an adverb and regularly patterns with the genitive. Tes abusu is feminine singular genitive. And pneumatha'u, the spirit, ta pneuma, this is a neuter singular nominative noun, the spirit of God, epifera ta. This verb form is third singular, it's imperfect, indicative, and it is middle. Notice it has the augment, it has the first principal part, epifero, and it has a secondary middle ending. And the Spirit of God was over, epiferato. Epano, same adverb with the genitive, tuhudatos, was above the water. This is a neuter singular genitive form, the nominative being hu dor, like so. And God said, ka apen hothaos, apen is the third singular aorist of the verb lego, it's a second asigmatic strong aorist, and God said, this is capitalized now to show direct speech, genetheto phos, let there be light. Phos, neuter singular nominative, the subject of this third singular imperative. And it is from the verb gignomai, a verb that means to be or to become. 
God said, let there be light, kaya genetha fos, and there became light. Agenetha is a third singular middle, and it's aorist.